I, I don't know how they, they got a group of people together and, and queried the way they did. I know some of them were illiterate. They couldn't even write. Phoenix was a working class town. Some would have called it a rough and tumble place. Yeah, they used, they used to be some rowdy people lived here at Phoenix. Now, the first three years, my parents decided that Phoenix was too rough for me to go to school. So I stayed with my grandparents, went to school at, at Harold for three years, and then came back to start the Phoenix. But the town also had some guests passing through from time to time. Oh, the gypsies are here. They'll steal your kids. <laughs> they stayed at the gravel bar down the creek for about, oh, sometimes a week. My mother, oh, she's scared that the gypsies steal us. Well, they didn't want more kids. They had all they wanted to own. They didn't want more. And I regret I didn't go down and see those gypsies. I regret that. In the 1920s, prohibition was on, but not everyone in Phoenix got the message or cared. Phoenix was the first place to have electricity out here. If you have light all night, you can almost drink all night. So everybody came to, to the Phoenix community to, to, to drink. You didn't have to you know, drink by candlelight or a gas lantern. So it was a very popular place at the time. And so it was, a, it was a lively place. And I think about all those lively times, how it must have been, you know, in the streets. And Hell Street got its nickname from all the hell raising going on there. Yeah, there was, there was plenty of that around, just like, you know, other small towns. I just <laughs> drank in, and they probably lots of, plenty of fights going around, and just that kind of thing. Beer bootleggers had their customers, Whiskey bootleggers had their clients. This was mostly a you know, religious community out here, but I think around here they kind of cut loose. We had no police, and it's just, if someone done something, he, he either got line or he moved on. It's just, just that kind of a community. Of course, we had trouble, like everything else, it was a melting pot off the beaten path. Families of all backgrounds came from all over to live and work here. I don't know how they could get that many people together with that many ideas and get along like they did. We had Bohemians live there, you know. They were odd, but they melted in. Yeah, there's a lot of foreigners. We call them foreigners now. It wouldn't be now, you know. But. I just think that's really, really neat that that was here out in the middle of Missouri, that something like that, you know, took place, you know, of, of different ideas and ways of life. So those, those aspects that people don't really think about, I, I still find kind of interesting. Phoenix was not completely void of class or culture. In fact, an auditorium was built in the 1920s. Keel Hall seated 700 people. It could be transformed into a basketball court or a concert hall. It was just, you know, it had hardwood floors and it was a very nice, it was a beautiful building. That's where they have all their Thanksgiving dinners, their Christmas parties. And I do remember something my dad told me about the Keel Hall. He said when, when he was young, they always had Christmas and Thanksgiving at the Keel Hall, and there was tables and tables and tables of food, and all the kids got a little gift. And he said that at the time, he was young, and he would look at that Christmas tree in there, and he, would, he has never seen a Christmas tree as big in his whole life. But of course, when you're young and you see even a six or seven foot tree, it looks big. Uh. They'd have plays there, the little Christmas plays, and uh, it had a nice stage, curtains and all. And then on the other side, they had a radio room. Radio was just starting. They, they had no radio in there, and they'd go in there and take with that. 
There were even special nights set aside for picture shows. They advertised it. It was a loudspeaker and had everybody excited. It will be a first talkie movie. So we went down there. Phoenix was a big family. Everyone was family there. You know, they were all family. And, and uh, when they all got together at the Q Hall, it was a, a fun place for everyone. Very few could forget one of the biggest points of pride for those living in Phoenix. And they had an orchestra there for a while. We bought our own instruments and paid 25 cents for an hour lesson. We had two musicians to start with. The rest of us were raw recruits, but oh, how we persevered. We even had uniforms. The men and boys sported white shirts, trousers, and black bow ties. Mamie Harmon designed and made the girls' uniforms. We had white linen dresses with black belts and black strings. We were a fetching group. We never did achieve the big band sound, but we did have our moments of glory. Hildreth Kirk Firestone. The teachers at the two-room schoolhouse got creative, finding some fun ways to keep the little ones occupied. The pet show was always a big day, Oh, if you had a, a dog or a cat or a, um, one, a couple of boys rode horses to school, you, that one day you could bring you could bring your pet. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't have nothing to take to it. Uh, we just had this, this old hound dog. Well, there was no swimming pool, but there was plenty of water to make a splash in. There used to be a, a deep a swimming hole back here where all the boys. And there, had, there was four different ledges where you could jump off of the highest. I never did have nerve to jump off the top one, but I've jumped off of the second or third one. It's a wonder that we weren't injured bad because those big boulders were cut out and there would be pieces laying in, down in the water. And, and uh, if my children did that today, I would just have a heart attack probably. But, you know, I remember doing that. Well, the one thing everyone looked forward to... It was three-day picnic, company picnic. They'd shut the quarry down, and they'd have a little, uh, <laughs> well, it's Mickey Mouse uh, carnival come in. And they'd have sack races and all kinds of races, shoot clay pigeons and play baseball. Just three days of that, every, every summer. The people who did grow up here, wonderful memories of it. I love to hear the stories, and the stories kind of bring it alive. Stories about, you know, school, and, and stories about people, and that kind of thing. And uh, that part, I hope, stays alive as well.